Welcome to Living in the World International Church. We are here as doers of God's Word with signs and wonders following. If you want more information about our ministry, visit us at www.litweek.org or email us at info at litweek.org. You will never be the same again. Now it's time to listen to God's Word from Pastor Femi Alaren. Be blessed as you listen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Good morning, friends and family. It's good to be here again teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to you. I'm sure you've had a wonderful weekend and you're still here in the land of the living, so no doubt God has a plan for your life. We have been looking at a series of teachings for this month of October and we'll be looking at the title, It Shall Come to Pass. And the reason the title has come for is from the Spirit of God, because I believe God is set to do the unusual in our lives in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Every one of us has a timetable with God. Every one of us has an appointment with God. Heaven has this timetable and each of us has a date with the Almighty God. And I'm praying that each and every one of us will not miss our date in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Because it shall come to pass, not a single jot of the word God has spoken will go back to him unfulfilled. The books of Isaiah chapter 55 from verse 11 says that clearly, that this word that he has sent forth will accomplish what he has been sent forth to do. So it's very important that every one of us get ready because God is about to do something spectacular in your life in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Reading through one of John Maxwell's book, I discovered that he said something very peculiar or very interesting. He said every time he gets the opportunity to meet somebody of great importance, he prepares for at least 10 hours if the meeting is just for an hour. So that when he gets there, he has something relevant to say and he he can maximize the opportunity he has been given. Now, that is just meeting with somebody who's human. How much more the Almighty God? How well are you preparing for the appointment you have with the Almighty God? Like I said earlier, God has a timetable and every one of us has an appointment time with him. Some people have received the appointment already in January, some people in February perhaps March, and the rest of the months of the year which has gone by. Others are yet to receive theirs. And that's why I want to encourage you today that you do not lose hope. You do not give up because God has his own timetable and he has a plan for your life. So I pray that today that this sermon will encourage you, it will motivate you, it will energize you to keep going forward and keep pressing forward to the mark of the eye calling. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now shall we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for your love, for your guidance, for your protection, for peace and tranquility around us. Lord, we bless your holy name. Lord, we know things might be uncertain around the world at the moment, but we know in our lives we have safety because our faith is built upon you, our our Father. My Lord and my God, as we sit at your feet to learn your word this morning, I pray, Father, that you open our eyes of understanding and that you reveal yourself to us, O Lord, in a new dimension, in a new way. In the glorious name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. A day you must not miss. This is the title of the message for today. A day you must not miss. God has a timetable and you have an appointment and you must not miss it. Because many of us in the past have missed our divine opportunities and divine appointment and we are still yet to recover from it. This is the reason many of us are still going around and circle day and night in the wilderness of life and wondering when will God answer us. Ask yourself, has God visited already? And were you ready when he visited? There are two places in the scripture where Jesus Christ cried, our Lord and Savior, when he cried. He cried at the tomb of Lazarus in the books of John chapter 11 verse 35. The Bible says Jesus wept. And the second place he wept was when he visited Jerusalem in the books of Luke chapter 19. If you read from verse 41 to 44. The Bible says there, he said, as he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it. In 42 he said, and said, if you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace but now it is hidden from your eyes the day will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you and encircle you and aim you in on every side they will dash you to the ground 
and you and your children within the wall they will not leave one stone on, on, on another because you did not recognize the time of God coming to you. There are very interesting key points within the scripture itself. And I don't know if we have the time to cover every point, but I'll try to make best use of time. Now, it says this. Number one, if you had known, if you had only known on this day what will bring you peace. In other words, there's a day which God was visiting and they did not know this was their time that God was visiting. Jerusalem had an opportunity for God to visit them. And after he visited them, they simply did not recognize the time, the place, the, um, the system of heaven. Now, the, the what should have brought them peace was hidden from their eyes. Now, there are several reasons why each and every one of us must never miss our appointment with heaven. Number one, when we miss our appointment with heaven, we might never recover from it. The Bible says, now it is hidden from your eyes. Many people talk about second chances in life. But you see, you don't get a second chance to make a first impression. As a matter of fact... The first chance might come with so much opportunities that the second chance that you get might not come with the same kind of opportunities again. Whether it be physical, whether it be spiritual things. It is important that each and every one of us are, is able to recognize the time of visitation. Because once it becomes hidden from our eyes, it's a tragedy because it will become difficult to navigate life. A man that is blind finds it difficult to find his way home. Whether you are blind physically or blind spiritually is a difficult thing. That's why I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that your eyes will be open. Spiritual eyes and your physical eyes to see opportunities around you. Because your time of visitation is now in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now number two, when you miss a divine opportunity or divine appointment with the almighty God, it gives an access to the devil. An unfair advantage, so to say. He said, why men slept? He said, the enemy came in and saw tears. In verse 43 of the same Luke chapter 19 that we read, the Bible says, the day will come when your enemy will build an embankment around you and encircle you and aim you in on every side. In other words, somebody's life uh, or the person who has missed an opportunity as great as having an appointment with the Almighty God his life will be under siege. That's why I tell people, don't be habitually late. Be very careful. It can leave you, it can lead you to all kind of trouble. Now, there's a story of a brother that was told, or a testimony of a brother that was, that was told. He lives right next to the church, but somehow he managed to get to church late. Every Sunday, he has been doing it. And everybody knows that he gets to church late, so there's no problem. But his house is probably three, four houses away from the church. One day, while taking his bath in the in the in the shower, or how take, taking a shower on Sunday morning, still late, woke up late, taking his bath late, had his breakfast late. Suddenly, the Lord opened his eyes, and at the entrance of the church, he saw an angel handing people gifts as they enter into the church, even though he could hear the call to worship or the opening prayer of the service. So he ran out of the bathroom with soap on his body and just a towel around his, around his waist and began to run towards the church. On seeing him, people thought he has, he has lost his mind or he was mad. And suddenly people were about to grab him, uh, grab him. And then he said, no, I'm not mad. I'm not mad. Please let me speak. Let me speak. So the pastor was citing that might be something he has to say. He allowed him to speak up. He said, I can see the angel. He's standing at the door. He's giving people presents as they're entering because they came early. Every one of us have a day of, our, an hour of, of visitation from God. There's a day in our life that we must not miss. And I'm praying that when your time come, you will not miss it in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Number two, number three rather now, you see, when you miss the opportunity the first time, <laughs> you might not get the second chance again. And this is something that many of us might have experienced in certain areas of our lives. There are many people in the scriptures that had the opportunity but lost it. Believe me, Judas is one of them. 
He was numbed, numbered among the twelve who were given thrones to judge, but he lost his throne and was given to somebody else. By the time you start reading the books of Acts chapter 1, you discover they, were, they elected somebody else to take, to take his position. There are many people in the scripture that lost the opportunity and they are never recovered from it. Esau is another example. Esau also lost the opportunity for the blessing because he was a gluten and he likes to eat. Let's be very careful because I said earlier that we might not get the opportunity, the second chance to make the first impression again. Number four, if you miss the divine appointment with heaven, then it might take a very, very long time before you can get the opportunity again. Now, you read the story of the layman at the pool of Bethsaida in the books of John chapter 5. If you read from verse 1 to 5, the Bible talks about him being there for how many years? 38 years. Now, every time he misses the opportunity, he has to wait one more year for the angels to steady water again. Every time he misses the opportunity, and he kept missing it for 38 years, and he remained there at the porch where sick uh, the paralyzed and the rest of them, the blind, the lame, were waiting. I'm praying for you that you will not miss an opportunity again in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Because a divine appointment with heaven will signify the beginning or mark the entrance into an untold breakthrough. So therefore, we must all be vigilant. We must all be expectant. And you see, the thing about life is that when we are getting towards the end, that's when we all get tired. If we we're supposed to call a fast right now and say, let's fast and pray. Many people will say, why am I fasting and praying? The years almost run out. But it doesn't take time. It takes God. All we need is one opportunity with God to share us in his presence. And everything concerning our life will turn around for good. Number five. When you miss a divine appointment or divine opportunity with the Almighty God, you might never get the second chance again. Now, I've read the books of Acts several times and I read Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit descended upon them. I realized that there were just 120 people in the upper room. Now, if they're just 120 people, I'm sure Jesus Christ had more followers than 120. As a matter of fact, he fed 5,000. On several occasions so it cannot just be 120 people but only 120 people managed to receive the Holy Spirit or the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the books of Acts chapter 2 what happened to the rest in other words they lost the opportunity and there's no second chance for the day of Pentecost to be repeated there's no rewind in the spirit realm you see the Holy Spirit flows like a river and when it flows to your turn you better jump inside of it because you might not have the opportunity to reverse it again and jump inside of it. So therefore, I'm praying for you that you will not miss a second chance or you, the chance that you've been given in the precious name of Jesus Christ. What day in your life must you not miss? You might ask yourself that. For a husband, it might be the birthday of his wife because he knows there will be trouble at home. For a student, it's the day of his examination. As a matter of fact, I remember the story of a young boy who was studying medicine at university and he has struggled to move from year to year because of financial difficulty you not know, because he was not nailed or he was not intelligent his parents had to sell a few things sell their land sell their car sell whatever they could to invest in their child and see him through school finally the boy got to the final examination which will mark the end of all his struggle because then he was about to graduate now, they had the examination and the examination was scheduled for 9 a.m. in the morning. As a matter of fact, the boy got up so early, about 5, uh, he, actually he did not sleep all night. So he has studied, he has prepared, he has done all he can. So by 5, he made his journey, to, he's made his way towards the examination hall. He got there so early, he got there around 7 a.m. So he thought to himself, why not rest for a few minutes just to recharge my body? So he went to one of the classrooms. He put his head down and he slept. And suddenly when he woke up, it was 12 noon. The exam was due to start at 9 a.m. and finish at 12 noon. And suddenly he woke up, he ran towards the examination hall. And the examiner said, there's nothing I can do. The exam is over. He had struggled. 
He had fasted. He had prayed. His parents had invested all they can. And he missed the day. There are days in our lives that we must not miss, ladies and gentlemen. There are days that we must keep awake and be watchful and be prayerful and be expectant. There are people that go to a night vigil and go and sleep. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Please don't go to a night vigil in any church and go and sleep. Because, you see, when an evil spirit goes out of a man, or when a demon goes out of a man, he said he goes looking for dry places. And all of a sudden, he finds you sleeping. Well, that's a dry place, a very cozy place that he enters. So you're better off being in your home before you go to bed, secure your house with the blood of Jesus Christ and go to sleep than go to a place where you're supposed to pray and then be sleeping. That will only run you into trouble. I'm praying that you will not be running into trouble in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now, how do we accomplish all of this? Number one, I have a warning for those who are habitual latecomers. Please, there's nothing being fashionable about being late. Being late means you are late. There's no African time in being late. I've said earlier, when the Holy Spirit flows like a river and it flows to your tongue, please make sure you jump inside of it. Because if it flows past you, that is it. There's no rewind button. It's the Almighty God. You can't reverse Him. Number two is that we must always be on our best behavior. Always be on our best behavior. There are times that the devil will try to annoy us purposely because he can see something that we cannot see. And I've seen people miss opportunities because they have ill temper or they have the spirit of anger. I've said it before, the fruit of anger is not the fruit of the spirit, it's the fruit of the flesh. So we must get rid of it. Now, Genesis 18 teaches us many, many lessons, but he talks about Abraham, who entertained angels. Genesis 18 verse 1 to 3. Now, Abraham had been without no child. So it was easy for him to be angry. And anything that moves around him, he wants to kill. But he was sensitive enough in the spirit to begin to entertain angels and then begin to wash their feet, cook them meals. And then he began to hear things that he would not, never will have heard. I'm praying for you that you'll be sensitive in your spirit on the day of your visitation in the precious name of Jesus Christ. That's why a testimony of a brother that I've heard some time ago. You see, he was praying for a job for so long that one morning the Holy Spirit spoke to him. He said, get up, go and sit down in the hotel lobby. And I will tell Lobby, he sat down, he bought a soft drink and began to drink, reading newspaper. He sat down several hours, nothing happened. Lord, should I leave? No, sit down there, wait. Suddenly, a man who is, is from the Far East, a Chinese man, walked into the hotel lobby looking very angry, very upset about whatever is going on. And then he sat down. With his anger, the Lord, the Lord spoke to the young man again. He said, go and speak to him. Now, when somebody is angry, normally their words will be very harsh. He didn't mind the harsh word that was being spoken to him. God told him, go and speak to the man. By the end of their conversation, to cut the long story short, the man came to the country to do a business. The people who were supposed to take the goods he has imported in has messed him around. So he was looking for somebody who could hand over the goods to because he needs to return back home. And he couldn't find anybody, so he was angry. And the man said, I can do it. He went from somebody looking for a job to somebody who became a distributor. Ladies and gentlemen, be very sensitive and always be on your best behavior. Because you don't know how God wants to visit you. Number three is that you must be prepared. Jesus said, I will come like a thief in the night. You must be prepared. Every one of us are forgetting something. The Lord is coming soon. It's been said many years before now. It's still being said now. The Lord is coming very soon. And he said he will come like a thief in the night. In the days of Noah, nobody has ever seen a flood before. But the man persisted in building the ark. Now who had the last laugh? I read the parable of the wise and the foolish virgin in the books of Matthew 25 of, from verse 1 to 13. It talks about five being wise and five being foolish. The reason they are called foolish 
is because they're not prepared. It's not because they're not virgins. Be very careful when you read the scripture. They are called foolish not because they are not virgins, but because they are simply not prepared. So many of us, even though as Christians, because the God, our Father, the Almighty God, is sending Jesus back into the world to for a virgin church. Many of us are Christian. We are not stained. We have not um, defiled ourselves with the world. But yet we are not prepared for the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Believe me, if he comes at the, at the time that we, we are not ready for him, he will take those who are ready and will leave us behind. May that not be your portion in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Number four is that we must not reject God's purpose for our lives. Many of us want to travel in a different direction and expect God to visit us. There's a day you must not miss in your life. Because whenever God sends you, he has an appointment there. He can tell you, well, pack your things, head towards Nigeria. Pack your things, head towards Ghana. Pack your things, head towards Sierra Leone. Pack your things, head towards America. Because he has something for you there. You can only learn lessons from Jonah, who was told specifically to go towards Tashish. Ah, sorry, toward Naviv, and he went towards Tashish because he was trying to run away from God. Jonah chapter 1 verse 3. So be very careful that you're not rejecting God's purpose and plan for your life and you're not working against his will for your life. Number five, be willing to disassociate yourself from the crowd. God does not call people in crowds. He rarely does that. Because people can say, well, he called all those in the upper room in the books of Acts chapter 2. Fair enough. But God calls people individually. And appointments are based individu in, in, in individually. When you go for a job interview, it is done individually. Even though you might have a panel of people interviewing you, it doesn't mean that every one of you will, be, will get the um Sorry. Just one person will get the job. So you might be interviewed right now so be willing to disassociate yourself from people there was a story of a man of god even though it's a sad story i would like to share it there was a day he was sent somewhere by somebody more senior to him in the in, in, the, in the church hierarchy so to say and suddenly he heard the voice of god he said do not go but because of the man, the voice of a man was stronger than the voice of God, he, he decided to obey. On that trip, his wife had an accident and she became paralyzed. So be very careful that you are willing to disassociate yourself from the crowd. God really calls people in a group. He calls people as individuals. So be very sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Don't let the voice of the crowd or a voice of a strong man in your life or somebody who has influence over you be stronger than the voice of the Holy Spirit. Last but not least for today is number six is that be watchful, be prayerful, be vigilant, be expectant, be ready. I know this sounds like a lot, but everything revolves around being watchful, be vigilant, be expectant. I've said it, that you see it shall come to pass. God has said it. He is not a man that you should lie, not as a son of man that you should repent. Numbers 23 verse 19. And he's not trying to impress us by telling us something that he cannot do. You know, when a, a, a guy is trying to toast a lady and he begins to tell her things that he does not have and um, houses he has never built. But you see, God owns everything and he will not be more powerful tomorrow than he already is today. And that's why I want you to be expectant. Because God can show up at any time. And this month shall be your month in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now, as I begin to close, what can I expect as benefits for a divine visitation if I don't miss that day? Well, number one, by this time next year, the Lord spoke to Abraham. Your child shall be three months old. And he thought it was a joke. Sarah began to laugh. He also laughed. But God that said it meant it. And it happened as he has said it. So, when you don't miss that day, you can expect fulfillment of long-term prophecies. You can ex expect generational blessings. You can begin to expect you moving from glory to glory, uncommon breakthrough, uncommon healing, uncommon transformation in your life. And also, you begin to see disappointment in the face of your enemies 
Because those that thought you would never make it will see you suddenly begin to shine like a thousand stars in the heavens in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now, before we close, let me give us a few prayer points. Number one, pray that God will not hide from you the day of his visitation. Because Jesus Christ speaking in the books of Luke chapter 19 verse 41 to 44 that we read earlier, that it has been hidden from their eyes. So ask that God will remove every scale from your eyes. This is a prayer that you must pray consistently. Because that will keep you sensitive and that will keep you discerning. Number two is ask God for the spirit of discernment. So that you begin to be able to discern the times and the season. The Bible talks about the sons of Issachar who were lord over their brothers because they could discern the times. Begin to ask God for the spirit of discernment. Number three is that you ask God for wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. With all that getting, get understanding. Because when the opportunity comes, you must know what to do. Abraham saw three strangers, but he knew they were not human, so he could discern. And he knew what to do instantly. He began to worship. He began to humble himself. He began to wash their feet, give them food. Wisdom is profitable to direct. Wisdom tells us what step to take. So begin to ask God, Father, give me wisdom. To know what to do when my day of visitation come. And number four is that give God give us the grace to be watchful at all times. I believe as we begin to pray these prayer points, surely when the day of visitation comes, we shall not miss it. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. It is well with us in Jesus mighty name. There's a day for you. There's an appointment for you. And you shall not miss it in Jesus mighty name. Shall we pray? Father, we want to thank you so much for your word. Thank you for power. Thank you for life. Thank you for transformation. Thank you for healing. Thank you for what you have done so far. My Lord and my God, I pray. On the day you visit each and every one of us, none of us shall miss it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We shall have the heart to discern, the spirit to know what to do in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. We give you all glory and honor. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise God.